I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. Here is a very interesting video in which we are going to discuss some conflicts which cause confusion in my students. They are trying to learn polynomials with the terms which are like indeterminates and variables and also polynomial expressions and indeterminate expressions. The question is, are they related? The confusion, the source of confusion is the term indeterminate variable used in polynomials definition. Now, polynomials is something very simple taught in schools and we do talk about indeterminates and variables also. But saying indeterminate variables create huge amount of confusion in school students. So, in this video we are going to understand basically what are indeterminates, what are variables, what are polynomial expressions. And then it's up to you to understand and utilize this information in your understanding of the subject. Well, in case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. So, let's talk about the major contents which we will be talking about. First, we'll address what are polynomials. Simple as that. Then, what are variables? And then, what are indeterminates? Well, indeterminates something which we cannot find exact value of. There are seven types of indeterminates which we will also see. I have added this only for my students to understand that yes, there are some indeterminates which are not variables. Okay. Well, there are other issues also which we might address in coming videos like polynomial means more than one term. Is that true? So likewise, on internet, you find a lot of information which is kind of shaky. Anyway, let's go back to polynomials. Well, as you know, polynomial expressions are something like this. Right. So, what I've written here is a general expression for polynomials, right? And that too in single variable. Polynomials can have more than one variable, so we are keeping it absolutely simple. So, just in one variable, x. So, x is my variable in which I have given the definition, general term of polynomial expression. Now, in this expression, the general term is written here like aixi. So, aixi is the general term where i which is the index, the exponent of x could be any whole number, including 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, are the whole numbers. Or we can say non-negative integers, makes sense. Polynomials can have one or more terms, monomial, binomial, trinomial, etc. So, I made that part clear, one or more. Let me say that even if I write y equals to 5, which is a constant, it is a polynomial. y equals to x, it is a polynomial. Right? So, these are all polynomials. Okay. Now, ai is the coefficient of xi. So, all these terms, the constants which come along with the variables, these are the coefficients of the respective variable in each term. x is the variable and a0 is a constant term. So, we do have a constant term also in this definition, right, a0 and x is my variable. 
anxn is the leading term with leading coefficient an and degree of n. So, every polynomial is decided with the highest power of the term, which, call, which we call as leading term. So, n becomes the degree, an becomes the leading coefficient. So, these things are absolutely clear, I think, right? Giving you an example, if I write x cubed plus 3x squared minus 5, for example, it is of degree n, right? x is a variable and the leading coefficient is 1 in this particular case. Okay. Now, let's look into what are variables, right? Because the conflict is variables have been associated with indeterminates okay what are variables well variables can be assigned any value in the expression right in any expression for example if i have the expression as 2x plus 1 you can put x as any value right x could be equal to 2 3 0 square root 5 whatever you want we're just saying x belongs to set of real numbers. That is kind of important in this particular case, for example. It could be defined as x belongs to integers or natural numbers. Well, let's say, if I say real numbers, you could put any real number for x. So, x can take any value. x is something which we assign. So, the key word here is that the variable is assigned a value. Any value which you think is appropriate can be assigned to a variable. Perfect. Now, on the other hand, what are indeterminates? Well, as the name suggests, indeterminate is a mathematical expression whose value cannot be determined. So, cannot be determined, right? So, indeterminate associates with the value which cannot be determined. Variable. You assign anything, it is already determined what we can assign. We can assign 5, 6, 7, any number to a variable. But for indeterminate, you cannot find the value of the expression. You get the idea. And indeterminate is an expression, not just a variable. Perfect. So, let's make things very clear here that indeterminate is an expression. So, keyword here is indeterminate is a mathematical expression. Variable and expression, variable is a part of expression and that too can be assigned. Indeterminate is an expression which does not have the exact value known and that's why it is called indeterminate. Makes sense? Let me give an example, right? So, we have an expression here which is not a polynomial. Look here, this is a rational expression, not a polynomial expression. Right? When you divide, division is not closed in polynomials. So, we have a rational expression, x minus 2 over x squared minus 4. Now, if I substitute 2 here, what do I get? Well, I get 2 minus 2 over 2 squared minus 4. 2 minus 2 is 0. 4 minus 4 is also 0, so we get 0 over 0. Now, this 0 over 0, can you divide by 0? 0 divided by 0, does it make sense? It is indeterminate, you get the idea. So, this expression is indeterminate for x equals to 2. So, but the variable x could have the value 2, no problems. Problem is, when you substitute 2 into this expression, you get 0 over 0, which is again an expression whose value you cannot find. And therefore, it is called indeterminate. Is that clear? Perfect, right? So, there is nothing called indeterminate variables. Come on. Okay, let's move ahead. Let's explore more about what indeterminates could be, right? We saw 0 by 0. It's just a common indeterminate which 99 percent students know and they use it okay especially in rational functions okay so we have just seen that indeterminate is a mathematical expression 
whose value cannot be determined. So let me underline this once again. It cannot be determined. Perfect. And keyword, exactly. Means it can be approached. So the idea here is that you cannot find the exact value, but you can kind of estimate, right? That is what indeterminate could be, right? So at times, using the concepts of limits, a value can be estimated. And here is an example. So I've picked up the same thing. x minus 2 over x squared minus 4. And I'm using uh, this term limit. x approaches 2. It means we are approaching the value. We are not quite there. So when x is approaching 2, the variable, for the expression x minus 2 over x squared minus 4, now you could simplify this expression factoring the denominator as x minus 2 divided by x plus 2 times x minus 2. And at this stage, you could cancel these two factors. Now, these two factors in numerator and denominator were causing zeros, 0 over 0. We removed it, right? So, it's called a hole, technically. Uh, so, a hole remains there in the function, and we get limit x approaches 2 for the expression, which is 1 over x plus 2, and which is 1 over 4. Is that clear to you? Graphically, what we could do is, we could actually sketch this graph also. So, 1 over x plus 2 means that there is a vertical asymptote at minus 2. But, at plus 2, we have a hole. And the value of this whole is, is 1 over 4. You get the value. So, at, at 2, let's say 2 is here, we have a whole whose value is 2. We get the idea. And so, the graph actually is something like this. You see that? So, this whole is what the indeterminate was and we say, well, this is approaching at 2, a value of 1 over 4. You get an idea. So, using the concept of limits, we can determine the value approached by the expression for that variable value. You get the idea. Now, uh, we are not going further details, but here is something for you to explore. There are seven types of indeterminates. How many types of indeterminates are there? There are seven. So, first one, which is very commonly used, is 0 over 0. And this could also be written as infinity over infinity. Makes sense. 1 over 0 is infinity, right? Or when we multiply 0 with infinity, we sometimes could find this value, 0 and infinity, whether it is 0 or infinitely large, or somewhere in between, God knows. But this is again an indeterminate. And then we have an indeterminate where we have difference of infinitely large values, right? This difference of infinitely large values sometimes is a finite value which we can find. And then we have exponents, 1 to the power of infinity, you know, 1 to the power of anything is 1, but how 1 to the power of infinitely large thing could be something else? Similarly, 0 to the power of infinity. What is that? Well, 0 to the power of anything is 0, but how about 0 to the power of infinity? Again, an indeterminate, and I wrote it once again, 1 to the power of infinity. And the last one, the seventh type, is infinity to the power of zero. You get the idea. So, there are seven types of indeterminate forms. Those who take up calculus and are looking into limits, they will definitely come across all these forms and they will know how do we handle these things. So, now, let's get back to our conflict. So, what we understand is that polynomials are defined with variables. 
no problems, but variables are not indeterminate. So, we have seen that variables are not indeterminate. I hope this concept is absolutely clear. Feel free to write your comments and suggestions. And if you like and subscribe to my videos, that would be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.